Miles Davis was one of the best known and most influential jazz trumpeters the world has ever known. Uh, he is credited with being at the forefront of several types of jazz, uh, modal jazz in the late 50s and early 60s, and jazz rock fusion in the late 60s and early 70s, uh, probably the most prominent. Uh, he was active from 1944 until his death in 1991, with a short hiatus between 19, 1975 and 1980. Uh, I think he made 56 studio albums. He also is the act with the most albums in this list of albums that I'm working from, uh, which is a total of 21 albums in this list. Hi, my name is Dan. Uh, so this is my first encounter with this album, uh, but not with Miles Davis. I've heard quite a lot of Miles Davis over the last few years. Um, and I would describe this album as uh, unusual. Uh, so it's instrumental, and it's, uh, it's hard to describe this as jazz. Um, and in fact, although Miles Davis is given as the artist here, the majority of the work here is being done by a guy called Marcus Miller and his sampler. Um, so there are a few other uh, musicians occasionally, uh, but mostly it's uh, multi-instrumentalist Marcus Miller and uh, sampling and uh, sequencing uh, with trumpets with a, a mute in it played by Miles Davis kind of floated over the top of it. So the music is kind of, yeah, I'm not sure how to describe it. It's got synths, it's got drums in it, it's got sequences, it's got hits and stabs, and it's very much kind of almost pop rock from its time, 1986. It was the time of the, uh, around the time of the rise of samplers in uh, pop music. Um, but as well as the kind of more synthetic sounding things in here, there are other instruments that are obviously real. Uh, there's some, uh, quite a lot of bass in here, um, mostly slap bass and fretless bass. Um, and um, this reminds me of something that I, I thought that I had recently, which is almost a joke, but not quite, which is that if, um, if a person makes judgments about other people uh, based on their race, that makes them a racist. And a person who makes judgments about the music based on, their, based on the bass, then that must mean that they're a bassist. And there, there is truth to the fact that um, the people who, who give the most attention to bass in music are often bassists. I'm one of those. So I really like the bass work in here. There is also um, guitar in here, and there's I think there's soprano sax, um, and also you know various other kind of real sounds. And some of them, don't know if it's been really played or if it's been played and then sampled and then replayed, or if it's um, from a sample that they've got some, from somewhere. But there's the the classic sampler sound from the time of the orchestral hit and of the uh, guitar hit and that sort of things going on. Uh, so it's got this kind of mixture of very obviously somewhat synthetic and very obviously real. Um, and that mixture of the synthetic and the jazz reminds me of the Twin Peaks soundtrack, which has a kind of feel like that uh, of the, again, somewhere around the same sort of time. Um, and lots and lots of uh, pop music from that time, particularly soul and um uh, so pop rock were using these kinds of sounds and these kind of structures in the music. Um, in some ways, it also reminded me of it because of the way that it kind of progresses and uh, um, where the, the music is, of course. Um, it felt like slightly superior on-hold music. It's the sort of thing that wouldn't sound out of place uh, on uh, when you're having to hold in a queue uh, on the phone. Um, so I would describe it as mostly being kind of jazz rock fusion then in that case. Um, maybe jazz for soul fusion at times. But there's one track, which is Don't Lose Your Mind, which I would describe as dub um, or uh, dub jazz fusion. Um, and um, this is because it's kind of, kind of got a slow reggae beat and it's very empty and spacey. So actually, I... I kind of enjoyed it. I kind of enjoyed it a fair amount. Um, it was mildly controversial, I understand, because it was a jazz musician going to um, not just electronic stuff, which uh, Miles had embraced previously, but also sequencing and sampling and stuff that's uh, very kind of 
processed and mechanical in some ways, which is the opposite end of the spectrum from how jazz traditionally uh, would be. Um, but uh, no, I thought it was okay. I thought um, actually quite good. Uh, but I thought maybe it was a, to like this maybe a little bit of a guilty pleasure. You maybe don't necessarily want to admit that you like this to certainly not to people who are uh, jazz fanatics and are really into the, the purity of jazz. They might sneer at this somewhat. Anyway, that's what I think. I'd love to know what you think, so please do talk to me through the comments. That's it from me for now. <laughs>